Saturday at 8, a &E is issuing you a actor of all time. Macaulay Culkin was probably the coolest kid in the universe. But he retired at the age of 14 after a string of flops. He was driven to these extremes, uh, maybe by the need to escape his family. And he's since become almost as famous for his family's fights. It was too much scandal for the family to weather. Somehow, we, we had to persuade him to come back into the business. Macaulay Culkin, from Home Alone sensation to struggling actor, next. Macaulay Culkin was the most successful child star since Shirley Temple, captivating audiences at nine years old. I've never seen anything like Macaulay in Home Alone, not before and not since. But when he was 16, he called 911, accusing his father of child abuse. While his success brought his family unexpected wealth, it also plunged them into emotional bankruptcy and then into the courthouse. Macaulay blames his father for some of the family turmoil and for abuses that we're not quite sure we understand. The young Culkin would legally separate himself from his family. Remember, this is the golden rule thing. The person with the gold rules. Paul Peterson, the former heartthrob on the Donna Reed show, is an advocate for child actors. And when you're in a family where there's only one breadwinner, it happens to be a juvenile, uh, that's, that's what the world lived upside down. Culkin disappeared for almost 10 years, but today he's back on the big screen in a new film called Party Monster. I wanted to create my own world, a world full of color where everyone could play. One big party that never ends. He brings an incredibly mature perspective to everything he does, in spite of being very young. What really went on behind the scenes to lead the lovable Macaulay Culkin to walk away from films at 14 and resurrect his career nearly a decade later? Macaulay Carson Culkin was born in Manhattan on August 26, 1980. His parents, Kit Culkin and Patricia Brentrup, never officially married. Macaulay grew up with a large family with uh, parents who both worked and struggled and, uh, you know, not much money, but a lot of fun. By all accounts, the Culkins were poor, living in a small apartment just south of East Harlem. Mac, as he's often called, shared bunk beds in the one bedroom with his six siblings. His mother worked as a telephone operator. His father, Kit, was a struggling stage performer. He was an actor who hadn't made his mark, which made him, frankly, a handful to deal with. Kit would develop a reputation as a stage mom, but in the beginning, he just appeared to be paving the way for his son to do what came naturally, act. At four, Mac was already on stage in New York Symphony Space. Joelle Ryan wrote a book on the lives of child stars. When you're a four-year-old acting, it's just all instinct. That's what makes kid actors good. Offstage, Mac's life was normal, and he was close with his family. He went to Catholic school and even helped his father set up mass on Sundays. New York bakery owner Herb Glazer volunteered with Mac's dad at the church and remembers Macaulay before he hit it big. He was a cute kid, you know, you know innocent. Uh, at that point, he was just being himself. Mac was one of many kids who used to come in after school for broken cookies or a piece of brownie or something. Mac continued to do local theater while Kit pressed to help him make the jump to the big screen. At seven, he got his big break with Rocket Gibraltar, playing against film legend Burt Lancaster. Well, um, I started out on stage, and then people started noticing me, so I got movies and everything, so... Um, it just gotten bigger. Audiences liked Mac, but the Hollywood business machine only started to take notice after his third movie, Uncle Buck. The film grossed $67 million. Mac was nine years old. So many people in Hollywood saw that movie and they walked out of it saying, who was that kid? It made Hollywood say, ooh, he could do this, but he could do this as the centerpiece of a movie. At this point, Uncle Buck director John Hughes was so impressed with Mac, he began to develop a script specifically to showcase the young talent. It would be Mac's defining role. Meanwhile, back home, the family finances began to center around Mac's paychecks. It kind of depends on how you look at it. You can say, ooh, parents quit their job to make money on their kid. Or you can say, an actor who never really made it and suddenly sees a gift in his child that he could nurture, 
that he and the mom and the entire family could help and not you know not incidentally could change the entire family's fortune almost immediately kit colkin began signing up his son for one film after another if your every waking moment is either finishing a project or heading toward a new one if where's the space to be a kid at nine mac met a former child star who related to that situation and that man was michael jackson Jackson invited him to Neverland, and they developed a friendship. In fact, Culkin is godfather to Jackson's two oldest children. He used to tell me that very few people besides Michael could really understand that kind of white-hot attention. Mac released no statement immediately after Jackson's 2003 arrest. Macaulay Culkin's life changed when his fifth film opened. This film was Home Alone. I've never seen anything like Macaulay in Home Alone, not before and not since. To this day, every grown-up and every kid I know goes, yes, or covers their face and screams. We <laughs> thought it was going to be a fun movie, but really, I didn't think everyone was going to, you know, really just love it like that, you know? The film became the third most successful movie after E.T. and Star Wars, and Hollywood was dazzled. Within just you know, five or six years of starting his acting career, he is the highest paid kid in, in Hollywood. By the time he was 10, Macaulay Culkin rose from a poor kid to the most successful child performer since Shirley Temple. But as the money pours in, the Culkin family falls apart. Next. Macaulay Culkin was 11 years old and basking in the glory of having starred in the most successful comedy ever made. He had charisma. He had this comic timing that was sensational. He had a camera sense that few actors ever developed. Bakery owner Herb Glazer remembers a visit from the child who jokingly bragged about his star status. He came in and he said, you know, Herb, I could buy this bakery if I wanted to. And I told him, of course, you don't want to, you know, it's too much hard work. And he sort of agreed, I think. By now, Mac was attending New York's professional children's school and even did a stint with the Balanchine School of the American Ballet. But he insisted acting just came naturally to him. I don't think I'm going to take acting lessons or anything like it. I never did, never will. The sixth grader won an American Comedy Award and was nominated for a Golden Globe. And audiences stormed theaters to witness his first on-screen kiss in his second blockbuster smash, My Girl. He wanted that movie, and he understood that there were sad parts of that movie, and that that's what life was about. He was pretty good about talking about the deep adult themes, but asking him about the kiss, you didn't get very far. No big deal. The film, however, would prove to be a big deal. Mac was at the peak of his career, and his father devoted all his time to managing his son's business. After My Girl, he negotiated a fee of $8 million per picture, putting the 12-year-old on the same earning curve as Bruce Willis and Mel Gibson. First of all, as a manager of talent, setting aside the father stuff, Kit did a fine job because uh, unlike most stage parents or management teams that surround young talent, he got the most money for for what uh, Mac was was doing and I give him credit for that because this is a this is a tough racket however if you set your role as a father behind that as a manager you are asking for future trouble and of course the trouble manifested itself Macaulay was worth an estimated 30 million and for Kit the line between manager and father began to blur he was developing a reputation as a troublemaker Kit Culkin did have a reputation for being overbearing. There's a, the famous Oscar incident where Kit Culkin pulled McCully out of the telecast for being a presenter because he didn't like the lines that he was too afraid. So the Oscars just said, well, we'll get someone else, and they got Elijah Wood. But this really was the first time that reputation, in a way, went national. Kit Culkin refused our request for an interview. We were told, quote, Kit has never spoken out about his family. He's always said that to do so would be to betray them. I think Kit was trying to protect his son's youth, protect his energy, make sure that he wasn't, um, you know, wasn't overworked. And I also think he was trying to position him as a star. Over the next few years, Mac's career slowed down, and his dramatic debut, The Good Son, was not only a box office flop, but also a personal disappointment. 
Macaulay Culkin did not get the world's greatest reviews in The Good Son, which was um, really considered his first starring uh, drama role. And that was something that his father had pushed for. We want him in The Good Son. That was to show his range, and it didn't really work. Then, later in 1993, Macaulay's good friend Michael Jackson was accused of child molestation. These statements about me are totally false. Mac later admitted he wished to speak out in Jackson's defense, but his father wouldn't let him. He was 13 years old at the time. I'm not sure that's a very healthy thing, and, and I, I don't want to go any further than that because I am committed, uh, through a minor consideration, to the welfare of all young celebrities. There are elements of this that uh, uh, make the attraction between Michael Jackson and Macaulay quite understandable, but people have to grow. You can't, this is not Peter Pan. You cannot stay eight forever. Then in 1994, Mac's career flatlined. He released three pictures that year, Getting Even With Dad, The Page Master, and Richie Rich. None was successful. America loved him when he was this cute little boy and he had these kind of squeezable cheeks and this adorable little face. And when he started getting older and he wasn't so cute anymore, he was more sort of a teenager, it just didn't seem to work anymore. He was growing so fast during the filming of Richie Rich, the wardrobe department had to keep adjusting his clothing to fit. But Mac was outgrowing more than just his costumes. His trademark cuteness was waning. When you talk to child stars, when they're making the movies and they're making the money, that's the fun part. The problem begins after, when they're not making as much. As Mac entered those awkward teen years, his career was tanking and his family was falling apart. It's doubly hard to go through the teenage years growing up and you have issues with your parents. Imagine if it's a business relationship in addition and, you know, your father is both your employee and your boss or there's money issues. By this point, Max Millions had moved the Culkin family to an upscale building near Lincoln Center. But life in their lush apartment was ugly. His parents called it quits and separated. In court papers, Patricia Brentrup claimed Kit Culkin was a drunk and accused him of being abusive and unfaithful. Macaulay Culkin retired from show business. He was 14. Macaulay just lost the joy of it or the will of it or maybe he didn't have his dad around to direct it so I don't think it was an easy I'm done with acting decision I think he was trying to find his life the boy most famous for being left home alone by a fictional family goes to court to divorce himself from his real family next Macaulay Culkin was sitting on a 17 million dollar fortune a fortune that pit his parents against each other Mac's father had moved to another apartment in their building and the kids were bouncing back and forth during a bitter custody battle then America's most famous teenager called 911 telling police that his father hit him for not cleaning up his room no charges were filed family violence is not unknown in the community that I'm part of. Because after all, it's not you, it's your child who's the success. So I, you know, I can see this is pretty straightforward psychology here. And frankly, uh, push comes to shove, I'm gonna believe Mac. Obviously that was a very close and complicated relationship. And then suddenly, not only was this teenage boy going through the ordinary rebellion uh, that any teenager goes through, he was going through the rebellion that a child actor feels, did I give up my childhood? At age 16, Macaulay had had enough. He legally divorced his parents and took control of his own finances. In about 80% of all the cases where there is a serious rift between the growing child and their parents, money is the issue. Because the child quite rightly begins to ask, did you make decisions based on your love for me or for money? The two-year custody fight left his parents bankrupt and on the verge of homelessness. A judge allowed them to tap into Max Millions to survive. That was trust money. That was Macaulay's money and attached to this order to make him pay for his siblings and his family there were no orders that reduced the family's uh, uh, way of living there were there were no orders that Macaulay had to be paid back that this was a debt children aren't supposed to pay for it for their parents my guess is that Macaulay wanted to save his family giving the money to his family could 
get rid of some of the guilt he felt about being different, about being more successful than his siblings, about being differentiated. This was a turning point for the Culkin family. Kit conceded and allowed their mother full custody. Macaulay's brothers, Kieran and Rory, were following in his footsteps, making a name for themselves in Hollywood. And Macaulay faded into the background. He dropped out of school and married Rachel Minor. He was 17. Child stars, they probably age in a way like dog years, and their 17 is maybe like year 25 or 35. Um, so in that case, it's how unusual really is it? Just as Macaulay was starting a new life with his new bride, tragedy struck. A fire broke out in his mom's high-rise apartment, killing four people. Macaulay wasn't in the apartment at the time. However, a lawsuit named him among those responsible. And while a judge soon took his name off the suit, the ordeal took its toll. It was almost too much reality for the public and too much scandal for, um, for the family to, to weather uh, without damage. Macaulay had developed a fear of going out in public places and lived in relative obscurity during his marriage. Meanwhile, he and Rachel were arguing. She wanted kids. He wasn't ready. And after two years, their marriage ended. I think he was looking for a way to grow up and be his own person. And, you know, and then I also think the two of them were in love, were a haven for each other. And a lot of people thought it was a horrible idea. And even though the marriage didn't last, it may be just what he needed at that time. It had been five years since Mac's last film, and he was ready to go back to work. An old friend cast him in a stage production in London, playing a student seduced by his teacher. It was a departure role for Mac, and it received rave reviews. This squeaky clean, adorable child actor was so strong in everyone's minds that it seems like he had to go the complete opposite side of the pendulum in order to really reemerge as an actor. Mac cut off all contact with his dad, and so Kit, once always by Mac's side, had to sneak into the theater to see his son's performance. He was reportedly proud of Mac's transformation as an actor. By taking that time away from the business, he, he, he um, emerged um, as one of the most mature, down-to-earth people I I've ever worked with. He's incredibly sane uh, and normal, and growing up famous is not a normal experience. Macaulay soon returned to Los Angeles and met director Fenton Bailey, who would bring him back to the big screen. If you do this now, you'll, you'll be one of us. The next time I'll make you VIP, very, very important person. At the age of 22, Macaulay Culkin added to the intrigue of one of the most anticipated comebacks in Hollywood by taking a role in the independent film Party Monster. Party in the truck! He was the only person that we could identify who could play this part. And uh, that was unfortunate. Or it, was, it was tricky because he, he wasn't working at the time. So um, somehow we, we had to persuade him to come back into the business. Culkin played the character of Michael Allig, a gay cross-dressing sociopathic killer. One of his great strengths uh, as an actor is, is, is the ability to invest himself completely in the part. To prepare for the role, Macaulay visited Michael Allig in Attica and went on a wild spending spree, shelling out two grand on topless dancers and booze at New York's Privilege Club. So we had some trepidation that perhaps he would be a little bit deaverish or difficult. And um, he was so unlike that. It never uh, seemed like it was going to be a big mainstream hit. It just seemed maybe because it was so out there, a safe place to tiptoe back in. With mixed reviews for his performance, Hollywood wonders, will this bold move for the kid best remembered as cute Kevin McAllister pay off when we come back? Macaulay Culkin is hoping to prove he's still got it, and it seems Hollywood is giving him a second chance. He's set to star in two more films, and after good reviews for a television appearance, he signed a deal with NBC to develop a pilot for his own sitcom. People who saw him on Will and Grace felt that he still has got that comic timing, he still has the element of surprise, he's still got that thing that jumps through the screen. His personal life appears back on track as well, with that 70s show actress Mila Kunis. But his relationship with his father remains broken. Obviously, that was a very complex, 
unfathomable relationship because his father did discover and nurture his talent. And obviously, Macaulay blames his father for some of the family turmoil and for abuses that we're not quite sure we understand. But one thing seems clear, Macaulay Culkin is back, determined to dazzle Hollywood again, and this time, he's doing it his way. When you're a child actor, you start your career again when you become an adult, you really do. You grow into a different face. It is a different person going out there, getting that job. So this is Macaulay Culkin too.